So there are a couple of other things we can use with Burp Suite. We can start fuzzing the website itself. If you click this right here, we can actually see the request and response. This is what um, our machine requests from the website, and this is the response we get. And as you can see, it's a bunch of HTML code. If you don't know HTML, that's no problem at all. Um, you can just pick it up as we go. So th this part right here is the header information. This is what is provided by the server. And everything below line 13, or wherever you see this doc type HTML, or this HTML class, all of this is used to render the website. So this is fantastic. So what we want to do is that we can actually send malicious payloads in any part of the header or the datagram portion, which is the bottom part, and see how the website responds to that. Obviously, this is not a valid attack path for this machine specifically, but it's good to know and have in your backend. So if you go ahead and right click, and we can click send to repeater. And if you go ahead and click this repeater tab, we can see that we have the, have the request right here. So we can go ahead and click send and we can get the website right here. So let's do some testing. Let's just type in test one, two, three in the datagram portion of the website and see what comes back. We get the exact same request. Nothing has really changed. So typically what hackers will do is that they will send malicious payloads in the datagram portion, the header portion, and see what the request comes back. This is for manual testing and manual fuzzing. So what we want to do for manual fuzzing is that we want to be submitting malicious payloads in any portion of this packet. So if you actually go back to Firefox and we want to disable the network settings, so if you go ahead and click no proxy, click OK, and then let's open up a new tab and let's, and let's type in ipsec github intruder fuzzing payload. And if we go ahead and click this 1N3 intruder payloads, there are a lot of GitHubs out there that already offer intruder payloads. There's a whole bunch of them here. But let's go ahead and click this first one. And we can see that the GitHub page has a bunch of information. Let's go ahead and click to go to fuzz lists. And we can see basic fuzz.txt, command exec, all these different types of fuzzes, SQLs for databases, passwords, if we're trying to brute force a login page. So let's go to basic fuzz. And we can see that we get a bunch of payloads here, 1111, just to see how the website reacts to this. So what we can do is we can actually just take, let's just take a random one. Let's take and and who am I? This won't work in this case, but it's just good to try these things out and go ahead and press send. So it looks like we got the exact same response here, but we have, you know, hundreds of payloads just in this simple text file. So for, so what we can do from here is that if we want to send payloads in fast succession, because we do have hundreds of payloads in just a simple text file, we can go ahead and right click and say send to intruder. And we can, and we can click this intruder tab right here. And looks this all looks good. We are attacking this house off this port. We may have to change the port based on the web server, but in this case, we don't have to. Click positions. So what positions is, is where we want to submit our payloads. So we can clear this all out. And let's say we want to submit payloads within the datagram portion of the packet. We can, we can highlight the, the portion, click add, and anything between these dollar signs is what, what we will be sending as payloads instead. So if we go over to, and we can leave a tag type, we can go ahead and click payloads. And this is where we can upload simple list of payloads. So this is why this is actually in this format. So we can go ahead and download this if you want. Um, go back to intruder payloads and we can download the zip file. So now it's starting to download and I will see you guys after it's downloaded. So it looks like it's successfully downloaded now. So we can go ahead and click this download function and click this folder icon and let's open up the zip file. So because this is a zipped up file, we can right click and click extract here. Awesome, so now we see Okay, so now we have successfully unzipped. So it looks like I kind of accident, accidentally unzipped it twice. No problem at all. We can go ahead and click one of these folders. Let's go back to fuzz lists and we can see all these base, we can see the basic fuzz.txt. So if we go into payload options, load, 
and then we want we just want to browse to this directory so we see home Kali Linux so let's call it in Kali let's go to downloads intrude master payloads fuzz list and basic fuzz.txt awesome and payload processing is this is if we want to encode our payload in a certain way, if we want to add base64 encoding, if we want to bypass the firewall in case we need to add a prefix to any of the payloads, it's just for that. So we don't want to do that right now because we're just doing a simple fuzz. So if we scroll all the way back up, we, in this top right corner, we can click start attack. So if you get this error message, don't worry about it. All, all it means is that they're going to be throttling some of our traffic but we're just using this for learning and testing purposes. So click OK. And we can actually see that the payload is being sent over here. So our first one is no payload. Our second one is that we get this payload. And what the status means is that if we get a 404, that means the page does not respond with anything. If we get a 200, that is good because the website did respond successfully and sent us data. So, and to give us length here, because sometimes if we're dumping a database, the length will, will massively spike up. They also give a status to see what how the website is responding. So we actually need to learn about all the different types of HTTP response codes. You know, there's 300, there's a whole bunch of other ones, depending on the type of traffic you're sending. So in this case, it isn't meant to break the application. It's just for a learning purpose. But this is pretty much the basics of Burp Suite. We have learned Intruder, we've learned Repeater, and, and as we learn more about web applications, we can learn more about how to use Burp Suite more efficiently. And hopefully, maybe even get a professional version if we ever take our pen testing skills into a commercial environment. Thanks for listening.